What's up, folks? Casual Dad here with our next Warhammer Combat Cards Warlord Guide. Ah, I got it right that time. Uh, we're going to talk about the next Chaos Warlord in the lineup, which is Ariman himself, which I love the new model. Always thought he was a really interesting, cool character. Um, so really excited about this one, which makes it a bit of a bummer that I don't rank this Warlord particularly high. Um, just looking at his traits real quick, he's got fairly low hit points for his cost. He's kind of in the range of Warlords in that area, but not the ones you actually want on the board. Uh, so he's quite fragile, but he is legendary, so he can max out both of his traits, and he has both Brotherhood of Psychers and Warp Surge. So he can hit for a lot of damage, uh, but obviously that means that you will want to run Aramon decks full of Psychers, so that your endgame pieces are both Psychers. Um, which can be a little bit tricky, because some of the better cards in Aramon decks are not Psychers, and so that's definitely something to watch out for. In terms of his trait, so the card itself and his statistics and his abilities are what mean are what really drive players to play Aramon decks as all psychers. But his ability, at the start of each player's turn, so twice per round, either one of your cards gains plus one or plus twenty wounds, or one enemy card loses one or twenty wounds. So it's quite random, uh, and often triggers the way you don't want it to. So out of your six cards on the board, three on each side, there are twelve possible options that could happen plus or minus, plus a little, plus a lot, minus a little, minus a lot, could happen to any one of the six cards. Um, that does get a little bit more consistent once you have fewer cards on the board, so your endgame gets a little more consistent, but it's quite random. But again, it doesn't specify psychers, it just happens. So you can actually just fill an Aramon deck with all of your favorite most powerful Chaos cards and just benefit from that as it comes up. Because that is enough damage to finish off injured cards, it does go through shields, uh, it's enough that it can trigger Berserk. It can do good things and bad things. <laughs> um, but just to talk through kind of classic Aramon decks, the one that I'm running right now is all medium cost psychers, all in kind of the high 20, low 30 points range, plus um, my endless pink horror. This guy is so good in an Aramon deck because he's endless, he's a psyker, he has psychic attacks, has attacks in every single attack type. You can gum, gum up a lane, do a bunch of damage, and he gets quite tanky. Um, but some of the more common ones you see are, of course, your Screamer here. The Screamer having that outflank and being four points is really, really good to help kind of emphasize your sort of pressure where you keep your opponent debuffed and buff yourself throughout the entire game. And then, of course, the cheap taunt and endless cards. The, the four and three point taunts are really staples of chaos. And then the three point endless is very common as well. And so, of course, are the uh, Nurglings. Those are all very common. You'll also see some of this guy just in there to fill out the deck. And then there are a couple newer Psychic cards that came out in the Cultist pack that you're going to see quite a bit of. Whisperhead in particular, I am so pumped to have this guy because this is the most stupidly durable, hard-hitting 13-point card in the game. And I can't wait until I get him high enough level where he's worth putting in here. But at the moment, I wouldn't touch him because he's uh, level 3, so he's barely worth it. But he's getting there. Uh, I'm pretty excited about that one. And then you see kind of a combination of all sorts of things. One thing I do want to make sure to highlight is that this guy is obviously doesn't have the psychic attack, but does have the psyker keyword. So he does charge up your uh, Brotherhood of Psychers, which is really thematic, and I really love that. So I wanted to be sure to highlight him, because he's a card you absolutely want to consider in your Aramon decks. But of course, most of the decks are going to be built around a combination of Taunt, uh, Medicaid, and then the Chicken. The Chicken, the Lord of Change. If you have the Lord of Change at any reasonable level, that is should be a staple of your Aramon deck. I am not going to play with that, because that's what you're going to see basically every time you see an Aramon deck played. Uh, let's mix things up a bit. So I've got decently high-level Psychers. All of these are Psychers with kind of different secondary abilities, whether that's more Brotherhood of Psychers, Warp Surge, Poison, Fear, whatever else you've got there. Oh, uh-oh. A thin Grayfax deck. That's not good. Good God. Okay. That mm, max level. Mm, ah, I don't like that. Poison is always funny. So you want to hit it against the more powerful cards to make sure you get the most benefit out of it, right? But then you also... I mean, I am not going to take down 450 health plus whatever he gets after his Medicaid launches. I'm also not going to put Poison against this fool because he's probably never going to die. Um, so my weak point is this guy in the middle. Celestine, who does not, luckily, have enough melee damage to take out my Dear Sweet Psyker right in the first round. So that is devastating. Now, good news here, I only have to kill one of those. Bad news is it's going to be extremely difficult to kill any of those. Other good news, 
Uh, none of them are psychers, which is great. You look at this thing, 500 health, yes. So poisoning, that would be tempting, but... Eh, so I am going to call it. I am pretty much guaranteed to lose this game. Um, and just kind of to speak to that, Aramon is a, a warlord I enjoy, but between the randomness and kind of the weird trait versus ability mismatch where he doesn't really make sense as a psyker unless he hits the board and then he's pretty squishy, uh, I would consider him probably the weakest of the Chaos Warlords out of all of them. Um, obviously you can make him very powerful, but when you make a powerful Aramon deck, it's not because of Aramon or his ability, it's because of the power of the psychic cards you can put in there. Now that Lord of Change is completely insane. It's one of easily the most powerful cards in the game um, and is a, a staple of pretty much every Chaos deck, let alone Aramon. And again, I'm going to lose this. Even if I manage to punch through Celestine here, she has Endless, and so I will not be able to do enough damage to get through here. But you can see Aramon's ability triggering a bit, which is cool. Um, what level bonus is this? 24%. So it's only a 24% bonus, which is helping me, but that's so much stats. I'm quite jealous. My Iron Hand Strachan is one of the first legendaries I ever got. I've had him forever. And mine is still, like, level 4, so he's terrible. So seeing a really high level 1 and seeing just how good it is, like, hmm. Love it, but also it makes me sad. And this dude, max level call, is a monster. Um, pretty much everything up until max level is a little bit sad, but once you get there, it becomes quite scary. So here we can see how powerful Aramon is. He's probably going to almost... No, didn't quite one-shot it, but... Oh, and that's so bad! <laughs> Take one damage. Take another plus nine damage for nothing. Great. Thanks, Zinch. Way to be fickle. Yeah, Aramon is cool. Uh, I, I, I personally think that he's in need of a rework. I don't know what it would be. I love how thematic the Bolt of Change is. Like, the randomness factor of it is cool. But he's just not great. Um, and really does struggle in a lot of different ways. But still fun to play. And again, I enjoy the lore around him. I love playing with Psychers just to see it. Um, no, I'm going to get smacked so hard. <laughs> I don't know if it's even going to make it to Iron... No, yes it will because he's shot. Okay, all right. Woof. 150. Yeah, so, uh, scary deck. But that... Um, yeah, brutal. That would have been a terrific Artemis deck to go up against. Uh... And now, in the interest of keeping this video somewhat shorter... No, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and... We will go ahead and build the more standard deck. I'll go ahead and show you that. Um, in part because that loss stung a lot, and in part because I am actually laddering with Chaos. So I do want to make sure I put a good fit forward on this, even if I think that uh, Aramon is somewhat weaker himself. So we'll start at the bottom. We're going to start with ye old Boom Psyker himself. And really, you can put any combination of Psykers in here that you want. Take out the ones that are generally weakest. And then this is actually a fairly standard main line. Uh, this guy is quite low level, uh, so I want him in there when he's higher level, but right now he's just too low. So we'll go ahead and go through. We'll grab some of the cheaper psychers. Neems, of course. I forgot to mention him in the initial bit, but the, the both AoE psychic ability there combos well with the trait. So that's actually somewhere where it can be a little bit thematic. Super powerful piece. This guy is also a staple because he's a very cheap Medicaid, and that leaves me with just the right amount of points to go ahead and do the slightly more expensive taunt, and then we have six. What do we do for six? That guy could be a really great piece for six, but I'm going to go ahead and put this guy. A little extra fickliness for six points. That guy does a lot of damage. Um, we'll talk about him again when we get to Skull Taker. So yeah, this is going to be more standard. Chances are it's going to be an easier match because, um, just because that match was brutal. Uh, but it's going to be a longer game where I may not lose as quickly, but make no promises that I'm going to win this. <laughs> but yeah, if you have any feedback on this one, I would love to hear if your Aramon is your most powerful warlord, you have tons of success, if you have a different build, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, Aramon is one I always enjoy making work. But I just have never never gotten there. And I love Chaos as a playable faction. It's got so many cool things in it. And I don't think that Aramon expresses the best of it. And I will stop dunking on him. Because he is... Eh, he's got his perks. And there are those games you play where his ability just comes in clutch. Where you get the exact right random hit every single time. And that feels so good. Where it's just like, oh, there's a taunt card. 1 HP. Boop, it's dead. 
Oh, come on. Having a bit of a server issue. It's probably my internet, but we'll uh, we'll take another look at that later. So this does end up actually being one of my longer Warlord Guide videos. If you're still with me, thank you for your patience. I will keep trying this. Okay, I will keep trying this until we actually play. Ooh, okay. Until we actually play a game, because I didn't want to... I want to make sure you get to see two games in each of these. Um, and some of my older guides don't have two games. I do plan to go back through later and actually polish those up and make them kind of more standard format with the ones I've been doing more recently. Um, which hopefully is something you enjoy. Okay, so you've got your area effect Psyker. You don't want him in front of the fear card. I will say that usually uh, Chaos has kind of slower lumbering pieces, especially if you sprinkle in your Nurgle cards, of which I have two on the board right now. So you will end up going second quite a bit, and so you want to keep that in mind when you're deploying and when you're building the deck. Ooh, that's less good. Okay, we got all the fear. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and try this guy. Bunch of hit points, he should tank for a while, and his Brotherhood of Psychers will benefit for right now. And he can just tank a lot of damage from Jane Czar, and does a bunch of damage, so should be able to help kind of temper her a bit. Uh, now, of course, the Lord of Change is very good, but once you start getting rank 2 or 3 regen, it becomes extremely durable, and that actually does combo well with Aramon's trait, because while the base regen from Aramon is not good, um, the amount of... Oh, there it is! So that's Yeah, that's the one you look for. Um, while the base regen from Aramon is not good, the way it can stack with just base, the regen trait, is very powerful. And so you will have those lucky games where you are kept alive and make it through some clutch turns because of that uh, bonus healing. Not going to happen a lot, but it will happen. There's that one damage again. I really appreciate the animation for that. It's just random chaos bolts flying all over the world. And now, oh, yeah, let's do it. Oh, love it. So twice in a row now, he's done that, like, the Bolt of Change has done that perfect just clear the board for me moment. Now this is a bit of a bummer, because I will end up killing this guy next turn. If he doesn't kill me first, it's a bunch of damage. Uh Maybe, actually. So here's what's going to happen. Avatar is going to... No, he doesn't have Furious Charge anymore. Never mind. I was going to say the Avatar is going to kill my Medicaid, which he will, but uh, I thought he was going to do it with Furious Charge, which then would allow him... Oh, no, that did it. Lord of Change, no! So, uh, this is a point where if my last card was Ahriman, Ahriman would be kind of effed. But I'd love the guy, but he just doesn't hit hard enough to go through Fear before that guy would just smack him in the face. But having the extra cards to hide behind, so you have a couple extra kind of chaff cards in here, really help keep Aramon safe, uh, which is fun, but also is a little bit of a bummer because you want your Warlord kind of in the mix once in a while playing stuff. And uh, especially Aramon, especially with his very aggressively tooled abilities, you do kind of want him on the board mixing it up. Just because. Because you kind of feel like you should have him on there. It's like playing Warhammer on the tabletop. You have, like, Eldrad, and you're like, this dude can swing a stick, bring it on! And then you get into some melee fight, and once in a while, you actually win one you really shouldn't. Um, and then we'll let the Pink Horrors have the victory on this one. Uh, you, once in a while, you win that melee fight you really shouldn't, and then that just makes you cocky forever. And all of a sudden, you have your, like, very squishy wizard running around trying to hit stuff with a stick. Um, no? Never happened? Just me? All right, well... My bad. Uh, but yeah, I've had some pretty hilarious fights that way. So There you go. That was Aramon. Uh, and hopefully that helped if you want to make Aramon work. I would love to see your rework for him, but also would love to hear your feedback if he's one that has worked out really well for you. So yeah, appreciate the time, and until next time.